In this video, you're going to learn the basics of how Google Analytics works. We'll look at how Google Analytics collects data, including the Google Analytics tracking code. And we'll also cover how you can modify the data coming into your reports using the different configuration options. Before we can use our reports, we need to collect the data. So the first step is data collection. Now, Google Analytics can collect data in a number of different ways. The most common is using the Google Analytics tracking code. And this is actually most commonly implemented using Google Tag Manager. So we actually use Tag Manager to deploy the tracking code on our website. We can also collect data from AMP HTML or accelerated mobile pages, as well as mobile apps and feed data directly into Google Analytics using the measurement protocol. So this is all around data collection. The next stage is data processing. This is where the configurations we've made inside Google Analytics are applied to the data as it's processed. Things like filters will be applied at this stage, goal configurations, and so forth. Finally, there's reporting. This is where we can access that process data through the web interface or using the Google Analytics APIs. We can also make use of other tools. So for example, Google Data Studio, Google Sheets, and more. And this is actually still making use of the API, but pulling that data into a different tool so we can then represent that data. So visualize the data and present it in different ways. You can make customizations at all of these stages. For example, when you're collecting data, Google Analytics will automatically collect page views for the pages people are viewing on your website. But you can also send additional custom data to Google Analytics too. For example, events for scroll tracking, people clicking on outbound links, watching videos and more. You can watch my video on tracking events with Google Tag Manager to start collecting these custom interactions. When data is processed, you can choose to import data into Google Analytics to also extend your reports. For example, you can import advertising cost data from platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter into your reports. If you're interested in importing this type of data, then watch my video on importing cost data into Google Analytics. And you can also customize the way you're reporting using the options built into Google Analytics, including the custom reports and dashboards. But we can also go even further. As I mentioned, we can build dashboards and reports, for example, inside Google Data Studio. You can watch my Google Data Studio tutorial for more on creating dashboards. So now that we've covered the three core areas of how Google Analytics works from collection through to actually reporting that data inside Google Analytics, let's have a look at how the Google Analytics tracking code works in more detail. Here we can see analytics.js. Now this is the Google Analytics tracking code. Just remember this could be contained inside Google Tag Manager. Now the important thing with the tracking code is that it needs to be placed on all the different pages of our site. If we miss a page, then we're going to have a gap in content, and we're also likely to see some self-referrals, so referrals from our own website showing up inside our reports. So really important, place the code on all the pages of our site, probably using Google Tag Manager. From here, what happens is the tracking code checks to see if there's an existing browser cookie on that user's browser. If there's no cookie, it will create a new cookie. And if there's an existing cookie, it will update that cookie for us. Now what happens is that the Google Analytics tracking code collects all the details about the user, including uh, details about what page they're on and so forth. And all of this gets sent across to Google servers as a hit. From here, that hit is processed, the configurations applied, and then we can finally see that detail in this case for a page view inside our Google Analytics reports. So that's how the Google Analytics tracking code works. It's also important to note that the tracking code as well as Tag Manager load asynchronously or async. And what this means is that the tracking code will not delay the loading of our site. So even though we place the code or Tag Manager at the top of all of our pages, it's not actually going to prevent that page and that important content from loading as someone navigates through to our site. 
We've already talked briefly about modifying what's collected into Google Analytics so we can supplement page views with events, transactions and other types of hits. And we've also talked about importing data and customizing our reports. But there are more ways that we can modify and customize our data inside Google Analytics. For example, if you want to permanently modify the data coming into your reports, then the best way to do this is to use a filter. Filters allow you to decide what is and is not included within your reports. The most common filter people create in Google Analytics is an IP filter. This is where we exclude our own traffic from showing up in our reports by excluding our own IP address. Let's jump into Google Analytics to see how we can create a filter. So to modify my data using a filter, I come into the admin section and I select filters. From here, I can click on add filter. And now I can name my filter. In this case, I'm going to create a simple IP address exclusion filter. From here, I can either use a predefined filter, which is like a simplified template or a custom filter. So you can actually select uh, exclude and then IP address and enter the IP address. Now this is perfectly fine, but you also have the option of doing this in a custom filter as well. So I can click on custom. And in this particular case, I'm going to filter based on IP address. And I can now enter in my IP address. This is also useful if you do have a range. You can actually enter regular expressions into your filter pattern inside your filter configuration. Once I've entered my IP address, I simply save. And now I'm going to be excluding my own traffic from showing up inside Google Analytics moving forward. So this shows you how you can permanently modify the data showing up in a particular reporting view inside Google Analytics. So that's how Google Analytics works. Tell me how you're using Google Analytics. Let me know and leave your tips in the comments below.